Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a makeup bag out of cake. So we're going to start off by making loads of different bits of makeup. So I'm going to make some makeup brushes and to do that I'm going to roll up a piece of acetate quite tightly and I'm going to secure that with some tape. Then you want to cover the end with tape and then I'm also placing some tape over a glass and then using a pair of scissors to sort of stab a hole so I can insert that tube of acetate into the glass. This will be the perfect mould for some tempered chocolate which I'm going to squeeze in with a piping bag. If you want to learn how to temper chocolate you can click the link now. So once they have been filled up with your chocolate they can go off into the fridge to set and they shouldn't take too long. Once they are set we're going to take them out, we're going to remove that tape and unroll the acetate and you'll find you've got these lovely tubes of chocolate. Now these might be quite long so you can just use a sharp knife and just trim them to length and then you might need to sort of trim the end, ends just to make sure they're nice and neat. Next up I've got some beige fondant and this is going to be for the bristles of our brush. So I'm just going to roll a little ball and then sort of shape it into the end of a brush shape and then I'm going to mould it onto the chocolate stick. Then take a nice sharp knife and we're just going to use the very tip of the knife to sort of score some lines in the brush just to make some brush marks. And then at the end, we're just going to use the tip of the knife and just tap it against the end of that bristles, and that's going to create the ends of the brush. To make these brushes extra fancy, I'm going to paint the handles with some gold luster dust. So this is just out of a little pot, you just use a dry brush and just brush it all over, and the chocolate takes the colour really nicely. To finish off the brushes, I'm going to take a little bit of pink luster dust and just dab that onto the end of the brush, and that's just going to make it look like it's been used. And I'm also adding a silver band around where the bristles and the handle meet. To make the powder and the blusher and things like that, I'm going to take some black fondant and add some CMC to it, and that's just going to stiffen up so it holds together a bit nicer. So knead that through, and then you want to roll it out with a rolling pencil. It's about half an inch thick, so it's quite thick. And then I'm taking a two and a half inch circle cutter, which is the second smallest cutter in my set, and I'm going to cut out a circle. Then just use your fingers to round off those edges to make it a bit more smooth. And then I'm going to take a sharp knife around the middle of our circle and that's going to create the indent for sort of where the thing opens. Then I've got one of these little fondant tools and I'm going to use that to sort of create the opening so I'm just sort of sticking it in and wiggling it around a bit to create like a little opening where you open the thing, kind of, if you know what I mean. A notch, making a little notch in our fondant, that's a good word, a notch. Then I'm going to roll out some pink fondant and this is going to be for our blushery type things and I'm going to use the next smallest cutter in my set. So that's a two inch cutter and I'm going to cut out two circles there and then this is really cool, you can take the same base pink fondant and I'm going to brush one with like a brassy sort of darker pink and that's going to create more of like a bronzery type look I think, I'm not really sure to be honest. And then I'm going to take like um, a lustery pink and that's going to create more of like a blusher. So you can use the same colour fondant, different luster dust creates a really different effect. And then paint a little bit of water onto your big circle and place your smaller circle on top. I also did this with sort of like a beige to create like a powder. To create an eyeshadow palette, I'm going to take some white fondant and roll it out really, really thin. And then using a strip cutter, which is about a centimetre wide, I'm going to cut out a strip. And then use my sharp knife to trim that into little squares. Remove any ones that aren't very square, that one. And then we're going to paint those with luster dust. So if you've not got enough luster dust, you can sort of mix some together to create some different colours. You could also leave some white, and you can also use gel colour and then dust over that with luster dust. Next I'm going to roll out some black fondant really, really thin, and I'm using a different strip cutter which is the same height as my white squares, and I'm going to use that to cut out a strip. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place one square, and then a little piece of black fondant, another square, another piece of black fondant, and another square. Then I'm going to take a longer piece of black fondant and run that down the side of that strip. Then repeat that process going along until you've got three rows of four colours. I hope that makes sense. Look at the visuals, they are more better at explaining. More better? That doesn't really make sense. They're better at explaining than I am. Then we're going to cut around those eyeshadows and place that whole thing onto a larger piece of black fondant and trim around that with a little bit of an overhang because that's sort of where your brush would go. And then we can use some more of those strips of black fondant to create like a little tray at the end. To make a lipstick we're going to take some black fondant and roll that into a tube, then trim off the ends and just sort of neaten it up to make it look a bit better. Then take a, some silver fondant or some grey fondant and you're going to roll that into a tube which is the same diameter as your black tube. And also roll out some silver fondant and use a piping tip which is the same as your black tube and cut out a circle. And I'm going to use a small ball tool to create a little opening in our silver tube. So you just want to sort of press it in and just sort of gently rub it around to create like a little opening in that silver. 
Then we can paint both our silver pieces with edible silver luster dust. Now you can totally change up the colours you use here, you can use whatever colours you want to make your makeup personal to you. To create the actual lipstick part, I'm going to take some pink fondant and roll that into a tube which is tapered slightly at one end. Trim it off so it can fit into that opening and then you just want to shape it into a lipstick and use your knife to sort of create like a cut so you get that classic sort of like lipsticky look. To secure all these pieces together you can just simply use a little bit of water. If you're transporting this cake I probably would advise adding a toothpick down the centre just to hold it all together but if you're not then a bit of water will be fine. To create some nail polish we're going to take some ready pink fondant or whatever colour fondant you want and you're going to roll it into a ball and then use your fingers to sort of rub it at the base to create sort of like a vasey type shape. To finish off the nail polish all you need is a little black tube, roll it out and then use your finger to sort of imprint one end so it's sort of domed inwards and that'll just make it sit on top of your nail polish nicely with a little bit of water to hold it together. And finally we are on to cake. So I have baked two six inch square chocolate cakes and if you want all the details of the ingredients and quantities that I use they will be in the description box below. What I'm going to do is I'm going to level off the tops of them and then I'm going to cut each one of those cakes in half so I've got four six by three inch strips and then on two of the strips I'm just going to take off a little bit off the end so then I can stack them up and it'll be slightly tapered upwards. And then I'm going to trim an A-line cut down the sides of my makeup bag. Just go slowly, I'm using a bread knife and just gently shaving off little bits. You want to go slowly because obviously you can take off more, but obviously you can't add more back on. Or well, you can, but it's a lot more difficult. You're also going to want to soften the edges, those corners, because you don't want really sharp edges on your bag because your bag would sort of be rounded anyway. So just gently going down those corners, softening them out. On the front and back of my bag, I'm also going to do a slight A-line shape. Not too much, not as much as the sides, just a little bit because the bag probably would naturally sort of bend upwards. So just a very, very gentle A-line cut on there. You're also going to need to cut a little opening in the top of your bag. So just using your bread knife, just gently cutting a little opening on your top layer. But then I looked at my cake and I thought it looked too big. It just looked too big for a makeup bag. So I decided to take the top layer off and then I would have to remake that opening on the next layer down. But I thought it looked much better. So once you've carved your cake and you're happy with the way it looks, you can unstack all your layers and you're going to brush them with simple syrup, which is one pot water, one pot sugar, boiled and cooled. And this just helps keep the cake moist. It doesn't make it go soggy, it just keeps it moist. Especially with a cake like this, which might take a little while to decorate, it's going to stop the cake from drying out. I also like to flip over my layers and brush the bottom with simple syrup, so it's not just the top that's light and moist, the bottom is as well. Next up, I've got a large cake board, so this was a 10 inch cake board, which is going to give you lots of room to put your makeup around the front. I'm going to add a little bit of ganache, and if you want to learn how to make the ganache, you can click the link now. And I'm going to place a little bit of ganache at the back of the board and add on my first layer. And then I'm going to add some more ganache in between each of my layers. Now my ganache was quite soft, I was in a bit of a hurry, so I would recommend that you let your ganache set a little bit longer than I did, because mine was a little bit wobbly and messy. <laughs> Once you've stacked your cakes all up with ganache, you can crumb coat it. And again, here my ganache is far too soft, but I went with it because I'm impatient and I wanted to get my cake done. <laughs> so just crumb coating the cake, uh, trapping in all those crumbs, creating a layer so our final ice, we're not going to get crumbs in it. You then want to chill that into the fridge for about 20 minutes in the fridge or 10 minutes in the freezer. That's what's great about ganache. It sets up really quickly and it also sets really firm. So when you're adding over all that fondant and all that stuff, it's going to keep a nice structural cake. Once your crumb coat has set to the touch, you can take it out and give it another final ice in ganache. And you can see here my ganache is a lot better. This is the texture that you want your ganache to be. Nice and spreadable, but not runny. I'm also using a cake smoother here to just run around the sides. I'm going to drag that top lip of ganache into the centre of the cake and sort of smooth around in the cavity. And then that's going off into the fridge for like an hour, so it's really set up. I actually left mine overnight, just as long as you can, so that ganache is set. When we add on the fondant, it's not going to make a mess. So it's fondant time, so I've got some nice red fondant here, you can use whatever colour you want obviously, and I'm going to take half of that fondant, I'm going to knead it, and roll it out so it's about a centimetre in thickness. Then you want to measure your cake, and then cut your piece of fondant so it's just a little bit bigger than that. Then pick up that piece of fondant and drape it over the one half of the cake. Now I forgot to measure the sides of my cake, so my fondant was actually too small, so I took it off, and I had to re-roll a piece, so make sure you measure the sides and the top of your cake as well. So you roll out that fondant and you drape it over and you smooth down the sides and on the top. You want to use your little finger and sort of rub it against that corner where the cake meets the cake board. And that's going to create a really nice sharp edge at the bottom there. I'm also using a fondant smoother here to make sure we get a really nice smooth bag. 
and then use the sharp edge of the oven that's the other sort of cut into the cake board so again we're going to get that really nice clean cut then taking your last sharp knife we're going to trim that fondant where it meets the cake board so it's really smooth then we're going to trim around half of the cake sort of in the middle of the cake so half the cake will be covered in fondant and half the cake will do in a minute you're going to go slowly and make sure the line is really smooth if you want you can use a ruler i didn't think it was necessary because it was a makeup bag so it doesn't need to be perfectly smooth you then want to repeat exactly the same set on the second half of your cake i'd recommend probably doing the back of your cake first because then you can sort of get used to it and then you'll be more prepared for the second time and you can do the front of your cake and it'll be a lot smoother. As you're smoothing the fondant onto the second half of the cake, you want to take great care to smooth where that seam is, where the new fondant meets the old fondant, because that means it's going to show you where you need to make the cut to make sure it lines up perfectly. Then you want to cut where there's two pieces of fondant meet. Now if you need to, you can sort of push the bits of fondant together if they don't quite meet up but try and make sure you cut it as close to the seam as possible. Then you want to again smooth it off with your fondant smoother and trim it off at the base where it meets the cake board. To create some sort of interest in our makeup bag, I've got a paper triangle, so it's a right angle triangle, and I'm going to hold that up against the cake and I'm using a Dresden tool to sort of run it up along the cake and indent the cake. Then you just want to move that along slightly and make the same marks parallel. You want to make sure you leave the same distance between each of your lines. It's really important to take your time here because if you go wrong it's quite hard to sort of smooth it off again. It is possible to smooth it off but just make sure you go slowly and make sure you're straight. Then you're going to turn your triangle over and you're going to do exactly the same thing in the opposite direction creating those perpendicular lines to create those lovely diamonds in your cake. You don't need to worry about being too perfect because I could see on mine some of my diamonds weren't perfect but your brain sort of figures it out and goes they should be perfect and your brain sees it as perfect diamonds even if they're not. Where each of the lines cross over, I'm going to add a little silver drogé, just to make it look extra fancy. Now it's time to add all our makeup, so I'm going to take one of my big makeup brushes and I'm going to cut like a sharp edge at the bottom just with a sharp knife, and that's going to allow me to insert it into the left opening of my cake. And then I'm going to add my palette at the front of the cake and I'm going to prop the mirror up against the side of the cake. If you want to stick things down, you can use a bit of leftover ganache, just add a tiny, tiny bit on the bottom of the cake and that'll just secure it to the cake board. You can add a little small brush here and your blusher can go there. To create a handle now, I'm not going to lie, I was really proud of this. I'm going to take some floral white and I'm going to bend it into like an arc and I'm going to stick that into the top of the makeup bag and then I'm going to take some piping gel and a brush and I'm just going to brush piping gel all over that wire and you want to make sure you get quite a lot at the bottom where the handle sort of bends inwards and then I'm going to take this cake bling ribbon type thing I'm going to, I'm going to lay that over the floral wire and that, the piping gel is going to stick it on and it's going to look like a really secure handle I was really proud of this and that is it that is how you make a makeup bag complete with all your makeup if you have loved this video please make sure you give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more cake decorating videos you can click here to see my last video and here to see a video randomly selected by youtube for you